So I'm a wife, a mom, a grandma. I had a career up until June and actually really up until three years ago. Um, I would, um, I think the biggest factor for me is in that is that I, um, yeah, I left a job and went on medical leave almost two and a half years ago due to stress and bullying and trauma and stuff. And I really haven't got my feet under me from then, but I had left a really good organization four years ago this month. And the move probably wasn't that great for me. Um, I 10 and a half years in with that organization, doing some stuff that I really loved, but that had kind of petered out. So I thought I probably should go do something somewhere where I was useful. But yeah, and uh, all my career, all my life, I had really struggled with feeling like there was something that I was missing in life. Like I was operating on a different plane almost. So um, I managed to develop anxiety and panic disorder and a couple of really deep sessions of depression. And, and also just in the last couple of years, I've lost both my parents. So now we're trying to adjust to orphanhood. <laughs> so lots of life changes, mostly recently. Yeah. When were you first diagnosed with ADHD? So... Um, I was just diagnosed and started medication last August, September, maybe October. Um, I was diagnosed, yeah, let's say September, because I had my very first psychiatrist appointment in August. Um, and when I was waiting for that appointment, my daughter, who always growing up was um, very active and some people said hyperactive so she was preemie she was 11 weeks early she was still hitting all the markers for chronological age not adjusted age all the way through her babyhood and so she was hyperactive very very active <laughs> And, um, but we never thought anything of it because she was so social. We just thought she was an active, more, I hate to say the word tomboyish, but just an active kid. She'd much rather play with the boys because they were rough and tumble and would climb trees and do things. And um, anyway, she was diagnosed last year with ADHD. And so was my grandson, her oldest, her firstborn, who will be nine this month. And he was always, we could tell there was some sort of neurodiversity with him, like really early on. Really sweet kid, really loving kid, but really like, you could tell before he could walk that he was really frustrated that he couldn't walk. Anyway. They were both diagnosed last year. And when she found out that I had a psychiatrist appointment for the first time, she said to me, mom, you need to tell him that your daughter and your grandson were diagnosed with ADHD this year, because if I have it, you definitely have it. <laughs> so that's what I told him on our very first initial appointment. And so he sent me to website. Uh, ASRS to do a online thing that the psychiatrists recognize or give credibility to or whatever. And he said, you know, you can do all 18 questions, but the first six are really going to tell you. And of the first six, I scored real high on five of the six. I'm not hyperactive, <laughs> not outwardly anyway. 
So when we talked about that the next month, he said, well, because you have other issues, I have all sorts of health stuff. And I had just had an angiogram the day before I first talked to him. So he wanted to do some research on what might be the best medication to try with diabetes and the anxiety meds I'm on already and stuff. So that's where we kind of are now. Um, I'm taking a med, I'm talking to a counselor, but not really a counselor specializing in ADHD. But when I started really doing some research on it, like through Kadak and um, Attitude and some of the Facebook people, um, I watch How to ADHD, Jessica McCabe or McCabe. I was like, oh my gosh, I could have been operating out of this knowledge 40, 50 years ago. But I think I really had my head in the sand more than anything, really denying that it was definitely a thing for me too. I was uh, always that squirrel kid, just always all over the place, um, mentally more. You know, I was always told to focus, to pay attention. If you'd only pay attention, you would live up to your potential. <laughs> and also told, particularly by my mom, my dad would laugh, but my mom would say, why do you have to be a bull in a china shop? You just, if you could just stop and be a lady. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, looking back, the markers were there for sure. But as most women, um, it was just, you know, she's quieter. She's not, she just doesn't live up to her potential. <laughs> yeah. What are some of the biggest obstacles you have faced because of your ADHD? Looking back and seeing, um, sort of more how I felt, like I was saying, I felt like I was always operating on a different plane. Like, why couldn't I just get what life really is all about? Or um, why am I so lazy? Why can't I just, you know, get the dishes done every day? Or, you know, do the laundry and put it away neatly like normal people. And um, even my desk at work in the, in, even in the, you know, 10, 15 years that I was doing really what I love to do my desk was unorganized I relied on so much on the calendar whether it was the outlook or you know I'd write it down and seriously I have seven planners because I write down birthdays I write down appointments I write down things I want to do but then I decide oh that's a lot that's overwhelming <laughs> I, I don't want that list. Um, but yeah, always feeling kind of behind the eight ball. Like if I stop pushing, it's just going to mow me over. After receiving diagnosis and treatment, what were your thoughts? Well, um, my psychiatrist, I feel like um, he's one of the best in the region. Um, he, him, you know, like he wanted to spend a month, like I said, researching what would be the best medication. Once I took that medication, I, um, like I started on five milligrams of dexamphetamine, dextroamphetamine, and then up to 10 and 15 and 20 over, you know, four weeks or whatever. But even just taking that five milligrams that first day, I could feel the anxiety, like just going away like it like I wasn't running inside to figure out life there was a calmness almost um so that's mostly what I've been doing like I said I'm seeing a counselor for lots of emotional stuff which looking back now I feel like if I hadn't if I had realized or acknowledged years and years ago 
that I was trying to operate on a different plane or whatever, but I feel like too, that I just thought everybody felt that way, that everybody was stressed and anxious and um, in, in one way, like feeling like there was this voice saying, well, but you're not special. Everybody goes through this. And now realizing, no, everybody doesn't go through this. Everybody doesn't operate this way. It's just, well, it's mind blowing. It's relief, but it's also so much sadness about, you know, 45 years that I could have lived differently or learned things many years ago to help deal with living on a different plane. My psychiatrist, Dr. Carey, said, you know, the second month that I talked to him, when I told him about the results and he was saying he wanted to do research, he said, you know, I'm so excited to see where your anxiety and depression go or what, you know, what happens with that once, once we get this figured out and get it dealt with. And really like, I'm still taking my anxiety meds. Um, and I've been on those since 2006, you know, so whatever that is, 16 years now, I feel like yeah. I wouldn't have lost my career maybe, or I wouldn't have um, operated, you know, so much. And they say like some of the stuff that I've read or, or listened to about women in menopause and premenopause or whatever, that it really exas the hormone changes really exacerbate the symptoms of ADHD. So, you know, yeah, probably could have done a much better job. How has your experience been in educational spaces? I'm a 70s child. <laughs> I, no, we didn't talk about any of that. And, you know, so many of my report cards said, you know, Carolyn would do so much better. I mean, I was a solid C, C minus student. And you know, so many comments about she would do so much better if she would just pay attention, if she would just get down to it, if she would get her work done, you know. But uh, I'm also a raging extrovert. So the best part of school was that there were people. It was also the worst part of school because I would overwhelm people and annoy people. And yeah. How has your experience been in the workplace? Um, lots of words service about that but not um no not any actual uh supports necessarily or accommodations um <laughs> when i was with the employer i was with where i got the bullying happening um when i finally kind of came to the place where I couldn't continue with that and couldn't continue with the other circumstances I shared with my particular supervisor that I was had anxiety and that um, due to the circumstances and there were lots of other things that added into that but um, I disclosed that I had been working you know operating in anxiety for you know at that point 14 years or whatever, um, 12 years. Um, and as soon as um, they did accommodate uh, as far as some stuff that um, we were supposed to get done, he did say, you know, don't, um, don't concentrate that on, on that too, too much. But then as soon as I looked like I was um, you know, within six or eight weeks, as soon as I was said, I was feeling a little bit better. I was expected to get it done now. And then, um, all of a sudden my annual review, because I'd been there over a year by, um, eight months at that point. <laughs> so my annual review, all of a sudden came up that was eight months late. And I just got a scathing, horrible annual review. 
And it was all about boundaries and not listening. And um, yeah. So that's when I went on medical leave. My doctor immediately put me on three months medical leave and I never did go back there because it was such a toxic place. But yeah, so that's where it all crumbled really. So, you know, and even the organization that I just left in June last year, you know, they were the people that I had left to go to the other organization four years ago. And just a really great organization, but you can have mental health issues, but you cannot um, decline in performance at all there. Uh, so, you know, lip service, they're just building airplanes in the sky, right? Just, it, it, it's all great in theory, but we still must have productivity. We still must have you at absolute top-notch capacity, for sure. Your excellence had to be around people service and not feeling like maybe I need a mental health day instead of talking to 25 people in a classroom, you know? And I get that because they don't just have 15 people or even five people to call on if you can't make it to class that day. But on the other hand, it certainly is detrimental when you can. How has your ADHD changed with age? I feel like I can see valleys and peaks and valleys as I look back that um, as a stay-at-home mom, when my kids were little, uh, there was a lot of low mood or maybe depression for years um just yeah not feeling at all successful in that and then um when they were you know nine and ten or whatever um I went back to school and felt really um stimulated probably by that and did well in school for a couple of years and then lots of personal things happened. My husband got really, really sick and stuff. And I sort of ended up going to work, had a few jobs <laughs> and supported the family for a bit and then kind of got into my career, what I would say. Um, but I feel like certainly the menopause period, it wasn't so much that yeah, all I, um, the only way I can sort of describe it is that the filters started to um, quit working or the um, ability to keep faking it or masking for sure started to get compromised more than anything. What are some of the biggest misconceptions about ADHD? Number one, that it's an excuse. Yeah. Um, hopefully that it doesn't mean, um, as a misconception that it means that the quality of work won't be there or that accommodations will be exhausting or detrimental to the organization or to life maybe, um, yeah, it's the two that come to mind really. Interestingly though, a friend of mine who is kind of on this journey, she's she's been sort of acknowledged that she's ADHD because her son was just diagnosed and he's brilliant. He's probably on the autism scale, but she just sent me a screenshot. She was at the Conexus uh, conference online. So Conexus is for employment facilitators, career development practitioners. And she sent me a screenshot of um, a slide about why people with ADHD are good hires. So I thought that was really like, like I said, hopefully there's a change in perspective about it being too hard on or detrimental to the organization. So 
That would be cool. How do you feel ADHD has benefited your life? I think it would have had I known that's, that was my superpower <laughs> and I could have seen it that way. Um, yeah, at this point in my life, I feel like, you know, I've said for years that I'm a lot or I'm too much or I annoy people easily. And I, I re I'm realizing that that's partly family of origin stuff, my little nuclear family seems to be coping with it fine but um outside of this little this little group and certainly my daughter who's adhd herself and has kids with it she's she's both struggling and coming to grips and also appreciating the gift in it um but at this stage in my life, being maybe so newly diagnosed, I'm not seeing a lot of silver lining. At the, but I feel like hopefully I just don't know enough yet or I haven't found my place now that I know. What do you want people watching to know about your ADHD? Don't run away from it. Don't deny that it's there. Don't feel like don't feel like you're looking for an excuse because nobody wants to be different or diverse. Um, and I don't know where that message even came from in our society, but if you're feeling different, you probably are. So yeah, just look around explore, talk to professionals who can help. And if they don't listen, talk to other ones. I just always, I feel like now that I was always trying to just be the same as everybody instead of embracing the parts that are different, that no, through no fault of my own I have blue eyes instead of brown eyes I have brown hair instead of blonde hair I have a neurodiverse way of wiring in my head and that's never going to change and you can't deal with it by not acknowledging that it's there <laughs>